Good morning, lovely people. I hope you're well. Today's topic is on genetic engineering. Um, I'm going to do a mixture, so effectively I'm going to give you the overview, but I'm also going to go into the extreme detail that certain exam boards need to do with things like using keywords such as recombinant, restriction, enzyme, etc. For everyone else, don't worry. This video is still going to have everything else you need, and you can skip past the bit when I get very, very heavy with the detail. So what is genetic engineering? Well, it's when you alter the genes of an organism. Um, and why do we want to do that? Well, it's so that we can produce huge amounts of a required substance. So the example we always look at is insulin. And remember that insulin is a hormone. It's released from the pancreas. And what it does is it lowers blood sugar levels. For people who can't produce insulin, they have type 1 diabetes. And they can get really ill indeed. So it's really important that they can inject insulin into their bodies. Now, back in the day, they used to use insulin from dogs and pigs and things. Um, but this obviously wasn't ideal, and if they ask you in the exam question why, just say things like there wasn't an exact match between the pig insulin and the human, so the human's immune system would try to reject the pig insulin. And you can also talk about it from an ethics point of view. Obviously there's a lot of people out there who don't like the idea of pigs being specifically bred to be killed for insulin. So many ethical issues. However, let's now look at the detail involved in genetic engineering. So what we do, we tend to do the, exactly the same steps. We get a bacterium, remember that a bacteria doesn't have a distinct nucleus, but it has little loops of gen genetic information, which we call plasmids. Now what you do here, and this is going to be the simplified version before I dive into the more complicated version, what you do is you remove that plasmid and you chop it open using an enzyme. And then what you're going to do is grab the gene from a human that is successfully producing insulin, and you're going to insert that gene into the now cut open plasmid and you're going to use another enzyme to actually stick those together. Then at that point you have what's called a recombinant plasmid which is one which has been changed and you can put it back into a bacteria and pop it into a fermenter and then with ideal conditions, so correct temperatures, pHs, oxygen levels etc, before long you'll have a huge supply of insulin. So very very clever, very cool and a very good modern technology. Um, for people that are studying IGCC, you might want a bit more detail. Remember, first of all, that the plasmid is cut open using restriction enzymes. The gene is also cut out of the human using restriction enzymes. And then you, you use a different enzyme to stick them back together. This is a ligase enzyme, so that sticks the plasmid together with the insulin gene. And remember, there are sticky ends which attach both, but again, that is a lot of information. Then you now need to pop this recombinant plasmid back into a bacterium and it will just grow naturally and it will produce a huge amount of insulin. Now remember another keyword which is vector. Now this is just a vehicle used to carry another organism's genetic information. So in this case it is the plasmid. So yeah, lots of detail. The other sorts of things they might ask you, um, they might dip into enzymes here and they'll ask you, um, why is it important that you keep the fermenter at a correct temperature that it doesn't get too high? Just say because if it gets too high the enzymes denature and the substrate no longer fits the active site. The same with pH. If they say, why is it bad to let acidity build up inside the fermenter, just say because outside of the optimum pH, the enzymes will denature, blah, 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 blah. They might ask what gas is allowed in, and you, you would say oxygen to allow the bacteria to aerobically respire. See, I'm really thinking hard of all these questions that I've seen in the past to see if I can remember them to give you top tips now. But don't worry, I'm going to attach some questions at the end of this video um, to really help you with this topic. Genetic modification is used in things like golden rice. Golden rice contains a new gene for creating beta-carotene. Now, beta-carotene is important because it converts to vitamin A in our bodies and it's really essential for eyesight. It's really important for poor countries that they have access to this golden rice because it means that they could avoid the eye problems which they might otherwise get and it would be extremely damaging. So in that case, certainly genetic modification is really important. However, many people don't like the idea of their food being tampered with, so it's certainly something to think about if they ask you to discuss it. But for me personally, I do think that a lot of the um, benefits outweigh the disadvantages. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for everyone that's subscribed. Um, it's really great and I'll see you very soon. So this is the first question I'm taking. The growth hormone used in this investigation was obtained from genetically modified bacteria. Describe how bacteria can be genetically modified and used to produce growth hormone. This is a very generic answer. Um, this is an IGCSE paper, so don't panic if you're doing one of the other subjects and you're not quite sure of the words I'm using. But for IGCSE people, you need to be very specific and use very specialist terms. So first of all, you need to get the gene um, from the human which makes growth hormone. That was horrible English, sorry. 
Then remember that you use a restriction enzyme and what that does is it cuts open the plasmids in the bacteria. Um, and at that point you have your plasmid which is nice and open so you can insert the gene for the growth hormone into the plasmid. You're going to use ligase enzymes to actually bind those two things together so to make the gene stick into the plasmid. Um, and then remember at that point when that plasmid has the new gene we now call it a recombinant plasmid. This is actually quite tricky but yeah just get those really crucial words in. Um, don't worry too much about the detail, just make sure you, you use lots of specialist terms and you'll get the full marks. Describe the stages by which a bacterium can be genetically modified to produce large amounts of a named human protein worth five marks. Okay, the named human protein, I would use insulin here, so do make sure you actually include that as part of your answer and don't get lost in writing about everything else and forget to write that. So actually I would write that at the start. So first of all, say that you take a gene from a human, um, an insulin making gene from a human, that would be your first two marks, and that you use a restriction enzyme to cut open a plasmid in a bacteria. Then you insert the insulin gene into that plasmid and use the ligase enzyme to seal. And then at that point, the plasmid is known as a recombinant plasmid. And actually, believe it or not, you'll have five marks. It's really similar to the last question. Just be very clear on the scientific words and you'll be good. Question four. The picture shows a sheep that has been genetically modified to contain a human gene for making a human protein in its milk. The protein in its milk is a blood clotting substance called factor nine. The process of genetic modification used to produce this sheep involves the use of two types of enzyme. One enzyme cuts DNA and the other enzyme joins DNA. The process also used a vector. One, name the enzyme that cuts DNA. Again, this is IGCSC. It's very specific and you need to write here it's a restriction enzyme. Or endonuclease, but I've never taught that. That's so, so high level. Two, name the enzyme that joins DNA. Well, that would be ligase. Three, name a vector. Remember the vector is just the thing which um, contains the gene that transfers the gene from one thing to another. Um, and that in this case would be a plasmid, but you could also get a mark for writing virus or gene gun here. B. This sheep is transgenic. What is meant by the terms transgenic? Well, it's just an organism which contains genes from a different species. Um, so for this example, it'd be the fact that there are human genes found in the sheep. C. The transgenic sheep can be reproduced by cloning. Suggest the advantages of reproducing the transgenic sheep by cloning. Right, many advantages here. First of all, the fact that the clones, they'll be genetically identical. So they'll produce a lot of the protein. Um, and it's also much a much faster way of producing the sheep because you only have to do the genetic modification once. So try and use your common sense here and don't panic when you read questions like that. D, part one. Name the small structures in normal plasma that are involved in blood clotting. That would be platelets. Explain why it's important to have blood that clots. Okay, firstly, so that we reduce blood loss because obviously if you had a cut that just bled forever, you would die. And second of all, it's to stop the entry of microbes. Insulin is an important hormone. Name the organ that produces insulin. That would be the pancreas. State the role of insulin in the body. Well, insulin lowers blood glucose levels by converting it into glycogen. C part one, describe how bacteria can be genetically modified to produce human insulin. Gosh, again, this question, and it's worth five marks. It's really worth knowing this question off by heart, pretty much. Seeing as it comes up so regularly, you need to use exactly the same language. So you need to obtain the insulin gene from the human. You need to cut it out using a restriction enzyme. You need to grab a plasmid from a bacterium, cut that open again using a restriction enzyme. Then you shove the insulin gene into the plasmid and stick them back together using a ligase enzyme. At this point, the plasmid is known as a recombinant plasmid. And remember as well that this plasmid is a vector because it carries the um, human gene. So basically, all those words together, nice and detailed. Two, the term that best describes bacteria that has been genetically modified to produce human insulin is, well, remember this bacteria has gained genes from another species and the word to describe that is transgenic, so you need to put a mark at D. D, the diagram shows part of a fermenter used to grow large numbers of genetically modified bacteria. My goodness, there's a lot going on in here. In fact, I'm going to go straight to the question. Suggest how the air inlet helps the genetically modified bacteria to grow. The clue here is air. What do we find in air? Well, that is oxygen. What needs oxygen? Respiration, and specifically aerobic respiration. So just say air allows oxygen in for aerobic respiration. Two, if the pH probe stops working, the pH in the fermenter becomes more acidic. Describe and explain how this affects the production of human insulin. Right, crucial words here, describe and explain. So first of all, what would happen to the production of human insulin? Secondly, why? 
right, there would be um, less production of human insulin. Why? Because there'd be fewer bacteria. Why? Because their enzymes have been denatured due to the fact they're not no longer at their optimum pH. Here's a question from AQA. The picture shows a zebrafish. Zebrafish are small freshwater fish that usually have black and silver stripes. Zebrafish can tolerate a wide range of environmental conditions. Scientists have genetically modified zebrafish to act as pollution indicators. The genetically modified zebrafish have a gene transferred from a jellyfish. The gene allows the stripes of the zebrafish to change colour. Describe how the scientists produced a genetically modified zebrafish. Right, you guys don't need to say too much detail here. First of all, you need to say that the jellyfish genes are cut out um, and just say using an, an enzyme, if you're feeling fancy, you could write a restriction enzyme here. And then that this gene is transferred to the zebrafish at an early stage of its development. Done. 6b. Some scientists are worried about the production of genetically modified zebrafish. Suggest reasons why two marks, so give two different points. First of all, they may have an effect on the food chain because after all, they are a foreign species. Um, and also, they might, it might have actually an effect on the zebrafish themselves and they may um, outcompete the non-genetically modified zebrafish. So it could be problematic for everyone. Um, so yeah, anything like that really.